Hi, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Gerard Younger. And in today's video, I'm actually following up a previous video that I did, which was how to live stream from your Sony FX3. Now, since that video is released, there's been a firmware update for the Sony FX3, and that firmware would be 6.0, which adds the capability of live streaming from the creator app using your FX3. So I'll be demonstrating that in this video. And I also just want to answer a few questions that I had on the previous video in today's video as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The new feature that Sony has added that allows you to stream using your FX3 from the creator app is called network streaming. And there are two prerequisites that are required in order for you to utilize this new feature. One being you have to have the creator app installed on your phone or tablet device, be it an Android or an Apple device. If you're on Android, you can find that app in the Play Store. If you're on an Apple device, you can find that in the App Store. Prerequisite number two is that you'll have to have your FX3 on firmware 6.0, which adds the network streaming feature to the camera. <laughs> For this to work we'll have to go into the fx3 to configure a few settings and we'll also have to go into the creator app to pair the fx3 to the app on the device that you'll be using so we'll start with the fx3 first let's go into the menu to configure it we'll go down to network we'll go to bluetooth bluetooth function and we'll set that to on and bluetooth will allow us to pair the fx3 to the creator app on the device that you'll be using so you want to make sure that that's set to on We'll go up to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi connect, and we'll set that to on as well. And this will basically allow us to connect the FX3 to your home Wi-Fi or business Wi-Fi or a hotspot. Uh, either is fine. So once you have that set to on, you want to go to access point set. And this is where you'll connect the FX3 to a Wi-Fi network. Mine is already connected, so I'm just going to back out. And next we'll go to streaming, network streaming, and we'll set network streaming to on. And that will allow us to use the network streaming feature on the FX3 with the app. You can just hit OK there. We'll go back, back, and then we'll go to connect remote shoot smartphone connection. And we're going to leave the FX3 on this screen so that we can pair it to the creator app. Two step forward. Two step forward. For the pairing process, you just want to make sure that the device that you'll be using is connected to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I'll be demonstrating this on an iPad and I have it connected to both. Next, you want to go into the creator app. If this is the first time that you're opening up the app, you may be prompted to create an account, but you don't have to. You can hit register later to bypass that to get straight into pairing to your camera. So from here, you go to connect to your camera and you'll hit next. And you'll just have to choose the FX3 from this menu. And with it on the screen, it's going to auto detect the camera. So you just hit FX3 and it detected it. You'll select the FX3 to begin the pairing. You'll hit OK. It's going to let you know that you're connected to your iPad or whatever device that you're using. And then you'll have to complete the pair on the device that you're trying to pair the camera to. So you'll hit pair. And now it should be fully paired. On the next screen, you'll be prompted to choose a Wi-Fi frequency band. So Wi-Fi operates on two bands, a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz band. To give you a brief summary, the 5 gigahertz band allows for faster speeds over Wi-Fi, but it has a shorter range. The 2.4 band has a larger range, but it offers lesser speeds than the 5 gigahertz band. I'm going to go with the 5 gigahertz, but it all depends on your situation. If you have both options available, then I would just test the stream on both networks to see which one comes out on top as the most stable. For me, I'm going to go with the 5 gigahertz band because I'm currently connected to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and it works fine. So I'll hit OK. This will change the frequency band on the FX3, but you can also do it on the FX3 within the menus itself. Now that we've completed the pairing process of the FX3 to the device, we can move on to step number three, which is setting up the live stream through the creator app. So once you've paired the FX3 to your device in the creator app, we can jump into the network streaming process. So from the app, once you have it paired, you'll see the FX3 as an option, and then you'll see network streaming. 
So we'll choose network streaming. And on the next screen, you'll have options for the streaming destination, the output image quality, the movie record setting and the auto power off temp. So these will be just multiple options that you'll have. You'll have more on the camera as well, but we'll jump into that later. To start off, we'll go to streaming destination and you'll have three options. You have YouTube, you have RTMP and you have SRT. So YouTube is a pretty easy option to go with. You just sign into your YouTube account. RTMP is real time messaging protocol. It uses TCP over the internet. And it's basically a communication protocol that allows you to stream audio, video, and data over the internet. SRT or secure reliable transfer protocol uses UDP instead of TCP. And it's a newer developed protocol than RTMP. RTMP is more of an old legacy protocol, but it's widely adopted and supported by a lot of sites. Whereas SRT is newer and it's not widely adopted yet. So in this video, I'm just going to focus on the YouTube option and the RTMP slash RTMPS option for this video. To kick it off, we'll start off with the YouTube option. So I'll leave YouTube selected and I'll hit next. You'll have to agree to the terms and service. Just hit next. You'll hit login with YouTube. And you'll just have to hit continue on this screen. It's going to take you to the browser. And then you choose the account that you want to use that you want to stream to. And then you just have to grant the creator app access to your account. So you hit continue. And now you've linked the YouTube account to your creator app. And so from here, you'll be able to create a broadcast. So you would just hit create. You can give it a title. You can give it a description, uh, start time and date. Uh, visibility could be public, unlisted or private and if it's suitable for kids. Uh, so if you pull all of that information in, I'll just put test here and I'll make this private and hit okay. And then you just verify that information and you hit create. And you hit okay. And this is just gonna remind you of YouTube's guidelines. So before you hit start output, just make sure you're aware of them. And you can start output from the app or via the center button on the FX3. Hit OK there. And it brings us back to this screen. So I'll go over these options as well. First, we'll start off with output image quality. So if you click on that, you can set the resolution 4K, 2K, 1080p, 720p. You can set the frame rate 60 and 30. And you can set the bit rate as well. They have ranges for each one. Next would be movie record setting. So this allows you to record the stream to the camera. If you wanted to, you can press the record button on the camera and that would just record the live stream straight to the camera. Next is auto power off temp. So I would just set this to high. So it allows the FX3 to operate at a higher temp when it's streaming. If, it, if you set it to standard, it'll shut off uh, a bit quicker if it gets to a certain temperature. So I would just set it to high. Next is just, it's going to show you the stream title and then the viewing URL, and then you can hit turn streaming on and that will put it into the standby state. So we'll go ahead and hit turn streaming on and that'll take us back to this screen and you'll notice a change on the FX3 and it says streaming standby because from this point we'll be able to start output and it'll change it on the camera as well. Hitting start output would begin sending the live feed from the camera to YouTube or whatever platform you're streaming to if you're using RTMP. But to go ahead and demonstrate it with YouTube, I'll hit the start output button and you'll see a blue line appear around the screen on the FX3 and that'll let you know that it's outputting. I've sent the link to my phone just to bring up the live stream on YouTube and it should output whatever we see here on the FX3 to the live stream. It may take a, uh, a few seconds to, to go ahead and work, but eventually you'll see it appear on the phone here. And there we go. So it has the live feed from the FX3. Now, if you hit start output, you won't be able to change any of the settings. So any of the settings related to network streaming, they'll be locked if you're currently outputting from the camera. You will be able to hit start movie recording and if you hit that, that'll start recording the live stream to the camera directly. And you'll see another bar appear on the screen of the FX3 and it'll just be the red bar for letting you, uh, letting you know that it's currently recording. 
And while it's live streaming, you can hit stop to stop the recording. If you wanted to end the live stream, you can hit stop output from the app and that'll end the live feed from the camera to the stream. In this portion of the video, we're gonna set up our live streaming using the RTMP option. So to do that, we'll head back to the app and to end this live stream session that we created, we're just gonna hit turn streaming to off and then we'll go ahead and do streaming destination. We'll select RTMP, we'll hit next. And here you'll have uh, two things that you'll have to enter in, the stream URL and the stream key. So the URL is going to be the server and then the stream key is going to be a unique key that you can get from the site that you would wanna to stream to from your account. So let's jump into getting that information from YouTube, for example. Now to find the URL and the stream key on YouTube, you just wanna to head to youtube.com. And if you're signed into your account, you just go to the upper right and click create and then click go live. And that'll take you to the live streaming page on YouTube. And from here, you'll be able to edit the stream. But what we're looking for is the stream URL, which is right here and then the stream key. So the stream key um, is hidden because you don't want to unintentionally share that because if you do, whoever gets it, they'll be able to stream directly to your account without your permission. So try to keep that private. But these are the two things that we'll need in order to enter into the creator app to get a live stream going from the FX3 using the RTMP option. Now heading back to the app, I've already copied the URL and the stream key. So I'm just going to paste the stream key from YouTube here. and hit save and return. That'll save the URL and the key to the app. But do keep in mind that the stream key typically stays the same, but in some cases it can change. So if you have any trouble with the stream key, just make sure that it matches the stream key that's under your account. Once you have both the URL and the stream key entered, you just hit turn streaming on, and then you hit start output. And that'll start sending a live feed from the FX3 to the YouTube page that you retrieve the key from. So if we head over back to the YouTube page, we'll be able to see the live stream uh, actually start from there. So uh, let's give it a moment. And there it goes, we have it. So that's pretty much the process of setting up RTMP to live stream to YouTube. If you wanted to stream to Facebook or Twitch, both of those sites support it as well. I'll leave articles below in the description if you wanted to see what the process would be for those two sites. But it's pretty much the same. You just need the URL and the key to get going to stream to those sites. So there are just a few more settings that I want to go over with you that are associated with network streaming. So to find them, we would just go onto the camera, go to menu, and then you'll head up to network. We'll go to streaming, network streaming. And from here, you can turn streaming on or off. That's the network streaming feature that we have on the tablet or in the app itself. And next would be stream connect error display. And basically what that does is it just gives you information regarding network streaming. If there's any errors with it, it'll be able to display it for you. I'll put image quality. This is to set the quality of the stream. So if you go into those settings, you'll have presets, high, standard, low, and custom. With custom, you'll be able to change these settings. So you can go into resolution and change those. Frame rate, you can change that. And bit rate, you can set that as well. So if we head back. Next would be output information display. And this just displays information regarding the stream. So it'll tell you the stream server URL. Movie record during streaming. That's something we went over already. That just allows you to record during the stream to the camera. Emphasize output display is the feature that enables the blue bar around the screen that will tell you if you're outputting or not. So if it's lit blue, you're actively outputting. If it's not, then you're not outputting. Next is root certificate error. And this just allows the camera to choose whether you would want it to connect to a server that has a root certificate issue or if you do not want to have it connect to a server that has a root certificate issue. If you want to be able to utilize a more stable and reliable connection on the FX3 while streaming, 
I would recommend connecting it via a wired LAN cable and you'll be able to do that using a USB-C to Ethernet adapter. And with this, you plug the USB-C side into the camera itself. And then on the other side, you would plug the Ethernet cable into the jack on the adapter. And then on the camera itself, you go into the network setting, you go into USB LAN, and you'll be able to connect it to the adapter from there. And that will temporarily disable the wireless feature on the camera, but you'll be able to have the reliable and more stable speeds of Ethernet. You can also use your phone as a mobile hotspot to connect your FX3 to the internet, where you would be able to take advantage of the low light capabilities and the out of focus performance of the FX3 for a portable IRL stream where you're just using your phone, your cellular service, the creator app, and the FX3. So lastly, I just want to answer two main questions that I got from the previous video that I made, which was how to live stream from the FX3 using the Elgato 4K cam link. Now, the first question was, can you stream in 4K at 30 FPS from the FX3 using the cam link? And the answer to that is yes, you would be able to stream at 4K 30 FPS using the Elgato cam link 4K. The other question I got was, can you stream at 4K 60 FPS? And unfortunately, that would not be possible using this current model of Camlink 4K that I have. However, they may release a new model that does support 60 FPS, but currently this model does not. And the good side is you now have the creator app available on 6.0 that allows you to stream at 4K 60 FPS from the app using the camera. If you've made it to this point, this is the end of the video. I very much appreciate you for taking the time out to watch my video. I put a lot of time, effort, and work into these, but I do enjoy making them. So if you're looking forward to more content from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And I'll go ahead and end the video. You all have a great one. Peace. If you are watching, I very much appreciate you for taking the time out to watch the entire video or skip through it. Um, but <laughs> uh...